welcome to my bench. Today we have an Orban Optimod FM 8200 Digital. These things were something special in 1991, and uh, they weren't cheap. They uh, they started at about $7,400. In today's money, that's about $14,000. This particular one is a U3S model, which means it has three digital processors instead of two, and it was $9,800. So we're talking 20 grand for one of these things when it was new. I mean, that's, they were not cheap. So this one has a little problem, um, and the, the guy sent it in to me, he says, uh, he says, yeah, it's, uh, it doesn't have anything coming out the the uh, composite output. This has two different th types of outputs. It has a composite output and a audio, straight audio output. And if we go over and look at the scope here. Ooh, I've got this thing turned on. Here's my scope with just me touching the connector. And we're going to go to the audio, or the composite, number one composite output. And you can see, there's nothing there. If you look at the, this other little camera in the back, you can see that I've got it hooked up. I've got inputs, left and right inputs are joined together. I've got an output down here coming out of the uh, just standard audio output. And I've got one here, which we're looking at right now, that's going to the, um, the, the, the scope. That's the composite one output. Now, if we look back at the scope again, there's composite two output. Absolutely nothing. So we'll leave it on composite one because it's easier to get to. Um, but let's disconnect this right now. And let's hook it up to... Uh, yeah, where is it? Um, boy, Ooh, that's how did the how did the wire gremlins get back here already? All right, so let's take the output here, which goes down to here. Here, uh -huh. here we go. Uh, put it together. Hook that up. Oh my. If we look at the scope now, there we go. We have a lot of output. Short the output out, that's good. Let's hit it on auto again. So we're looking at what? About oh, 34, 31 millivolts, 12 millivolts RMS, um, and let's see. And right, come on, mouse, right there. We're looking at about a kilohertz, 973.5. That's close enough for one kilohertz. And uh, I'm not feeding it very hard. Let me get this camera. Um, if we look at the, let's see, there we go. If we look at the input, uh, you can see that the um, AGC is full on, basically. And my output is pretty low. Okay, why am I not? I don't have any buttons. I think I, I think I scared it. Let's reboot this thing. Click. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's all been replaced. All right. There we go. There's the I. There we go. I've turned it off and on a couple of times. There's the I/O meter, composite output. I am getting 50% level, and if I turn that down, you can see it moved to down under 25. Let's turn it back up again, and I'm back up to 50. So it thinks I got composite level. There's my left and right output, right there. 
and they're even, they should be, they're plugged in the same thing, and there's a left and right input right there. Um, so, it thinks, it's, it's doing what it thinks it's supposed to do. However, we have absolutely nothing out of the composite. And we gotta figure out why. I'll put this back on composite. <sighs> Alright, so now I gotta get this open. In order to get this open, uh, let's see, I've got a couple of things I can use as hockey pucks here. Oof! Alright, there we go. These things open nicely. I mean, they're what just fell. I don't know. Alright. So these open like this. I can't... Ugh. They open like this here. You can see it. They, they slide down and you can get into them. They're really nice that way. I love them. Let's pull this up just a little bit so you get a full view. And uh, let's turn this off because it's not working. And let's go look at the uh, block diagram here and see what's going on. So, whoops. So if we look at the block diagram, we have look for something on here that says composite. Hmm. Where is it? There is my analog audio board. There is, well, I'll tell some test switch stereo generator board. Ah, here it is. <coughs> Here's our composite IO, or composite circuit, right over here, uh, with some sort of a jumper. Hmm, a jumper. wonder what that is. So that's on the stereo generator board. Okay, so that's on the stereo generator board along with the baseband filters, 19 kilohertz, and all that kind of stuff. Okay, well, which one is the stereo generator board? Let's bring it back over here. Alright, so all the boards are marked. That's nice. I mean, if you look at it, here's... That one says analog in, out. That one says, aha! Come on, stereo generator. That's one we want. There's DSP1, DSP2, DSP3. There was a place for a DSP4, I guess. I never saw one. There's the control board for the that goes to the ribbon cable to the front front of the thing. So we want that board right there. Okay. Oh. It's off. And we'll pull this out. All right, here we go. Let's take a look at what we've got. Oh, fairly complicated board. Um, let's let's go and look at the uh, the actual board for this in the schematic. Ah, it's interconnects. What is this? This is the control board. That's more control board. These are DSP boards. This is analog I.O. This is the stereo generator board. Yep, looks just like what we've got. Uh, let's take a look at the schematic. Alright, so where are, oh, here they are, right here, Marcus, come on, do what I told you to do, wow, why am I not, it's not letting me mark it, whoops, Hmm, interesting. Anyway, 
No, I don't want to add any signatures. All right. What did I just do? Anyway, well, follow my cursor here. So we've got... Here they are. Here's my uh, composite output and ground, and here's composite 2 and ground. Here's the SCA input, and it's ground for mixing with your composite. And here's those little jumpers we were talking about. Those are, okay, straight 0 ohm output and 75 ohm output, depending on how you've got things set up. You've got an output attenuator here which is on the f on this board right here these guys uh, and we've got a test point okay this says this test point here goes to the composite meters um, so that would be test point number five um, 13, 9, 6, 11, 15, 15. test point five ah okay so, we'll hook up test point five. I have a feeling, because our meter says it's already there, let's see. Ugh. Get back in there. I need new probes. Let's look at the scope. Okay, scope is not showing me anything. Let's turn it on and see what it gives me. On channel 2. Alright, well, I've got 953. So I got 953. No, that can't be right. Let's measure from here. Are you just gonna... Is everything... Yeah, that's cute. It just shut down. <laughs> oh boy. Alright, so... Let's go back up and get you. And you. Why is it shutting down on me? That's not right. You're supposed to be working. View. <laughs> Measure window. Frequency. Okay, so we got about 600, and, there's about 62 kilohertz sitting there, which is right. That's what it's supposed to be. And it has some modulation on it, I believe. Let's see if we take... Um, Take my time per division down here a little bit. Boy. My little scope is not being happy with me. Yeah, okay, so you can see there is modulation on there. Uh, I can't see where it'd be. Yeah, there it is. If we turn this off and back up again, yeah, we got we got some modulation on it. So, um, I that means it knows that it's there on that um, on that test point. Well, that's nice. So, what's our next spot to test here? Let's lo go back to the schematic. Um, so we want the output of, we're on composite one, so let's get the output of this LM318. Boy, these are some old buggers here, I'm telling you. Alright. Well, let's see if I can get this set up over here so we can see what's going on. Um...
Okay. I don't know if you're going to be able to see this or not. Um, we're off, and we want pin six of IC15. Oh, great, they're not marked on the board. Uh, so let's go back up one. Mm. IC15 is this uh, top one right there. So we want pin six of that IC. I know, boring. Basic troubleshooting. All right, turn it on. Let it get set up. Go back to the scope if it'll let me. Okay, so we want pin six of this guy, which is one, two, three, four, five. This is hard to do. I wish I had the uh, output with we'll setup cards. We got almost nothing there. Um, so we got pin two. We got a little bit. And pin two and three. All right. What the heck is going on? We had. Oh, I'm doing something wrong. Go back to the schematic here. Okay, pin 2 goes to the inverting in input directly from TP5. So that would be... And there's a feedback from a 25K off of IC16. And it comes back to pin 2. So we got... We got a garbanzo of stuff there on that. Uh, let's see if we can find R63. Uh, R63 is right up. Right above that cap. Okay, so let's see what we got there. Nothing on that side, and a whole lot on that side. Wow, okay. Let's take some voltage measurements. Basically, it's just an op amp, so they should be even. So we got what one? Let's see, on the on pin four, I got minus fifteen. Pin eight, I got plus fifteen. On pin two, which is the I got minus one, and on pin three, I got one. Well, that's not right. Is it the same down here? No, minus one, plus three. But what's my output look? Well, that's not right. Those are, should follow each other. Uh, my output is pin six, minus seven tenths of a bull. That's being dragged down. So those they should be approximately the same. And they're not. Hmm. Okay. Well, I guess let's pull this out again. We'll get that off of there. <coughs> you know, you guys know how an op app works. The plus and minus inputs are going to try to follow each other as much as possible and they're not but I'm, it's not the op amp that's doing it 
because the other input is bad. What are these guys? LT1010. All right, let's go look up an LT1010 and see what that is. All right, uh, LT1010. CH. Uh, it's Digichip. Um, LT1010CH is a fast 150 milliamp power buffer. Okay, so basically, let's see. Basically, it takes the output of an amplifier, this one's positive, but this one is a non-inverting, but that doesn't matter, 100 in, has V in, it has the input and an output, and voltage, plus and minus, and that's it. So basically, it's just a buffer. Oh, okay, and it looks like looks like this is what we've got right here um, so it's a TO39 and it has V minus is the case the input is there there and the output is there huh. and it comes in several different packages it comes in a TO220 2 has an input plus minus bias and output. This one doesn't have a bias. Oh, okay. Well, interesting. Not really much of a way to test those. But I know it's not the amp, the op amp. It's the output. The output of the op amp is just being drugged down. Not the... Hmm. Because I don't have anything even going into it. So it's, it's just shutting itself down. Well, it's all dropping across this resistor. Okay, well, I don't even know how to test one of those. But I'm flat guarantee you that's the problem. And we're going to have to get some. Oh, see if we can find them. Uh, it's it is going to be interesting. So, I'll be back. Okay, we're back. Uh, it's uh, like a week later, a little over a week later. I finally found those things. They're, uh, yeah, <laughs> they're they're uh, they're hard to find, and they're not. Uh, huh. They Orban had a fix for this for replacing it with that other chip, but that looks like an awful hokey way to do it, and it wouldn't wouldn't fit in here. It would look awful and. I tr so I said, you know what, let's see if we can find some, and I did, and they were uh, like five bucks a piece, and I found them. Here they are. So we're going to, uh, we're going to try it and see what we got here. Um, solder wick. Here we are. And a little bit of... Yeah, flux. So we'll do that. We'll take this guy out of here and see. There's really, I haven't got any real good way of testing these. I mean, I suppose I could build up a breadboard, but it'd be easier just to do what we're doing. Um, I was amazed. I got these shipped in <laughs> from China. Only place to find them. Uh, and I used DHL. I paid for it. It was like 20 bucks. But they were here within in a few days. I mean, it was really quick. So, there's no leads on the other sides of these packages. Everything on this board is cut down right at the... Oh, that's the ground side. It's cut down right at the um, the board itself.
Come on. You can do it. Ow. Ow. I need, I need gate glasses here. Good, that's good. That's good. That one's not. Hmm, why is that off? Guess I never turned it on. Um, yeah, everything's cut down real flush with the board. And it's, um, Makes them difficult to get out, especially with a solder sucker, so I'm not even going to try to use that. Um, well, those are all loose except for that one. When I use solder, solder wick like this, I always save it, save the little bits and pieces. You'd be surprised how handy that comes in um, for little pieces of board that get burnt up like power supply traces and that kind of stuff. They, uh, just make sure when you do it that you... you know that that's the problem before you do you've already fixed whatever blew it out to begin with alrighty now let's poke you through that's the uh, that's the ground lead takes a little more oomph to get it out I have plenty of oomph here but Okay, clear this hole out. There. Alright, all the holes are clear. Where did my little part go? Uh, there it is. Alright. So here's our here's our little part. So let's take one of these guys, and they were in these little 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 standoffs. They got little bumps on either side of them to keep them up off the board. Got to straighten the leads out. Boy, I hope these are good. They appear to have never been used. Okay. All right, and the So it goes on the board the same way as the other one with the little doohickey pointing up that way. So that puts, yeah, that puts the ground up there. Wow, these little, little standoffs make it rather difficult to get it in there. Move them over just a little bit. Sorry, I gotta do this down here because I can't see without it. Okay. I think I need to do a little explanation on what I said about uh, op amps. The way an op amp works is you feed an input to either the inverting or non inverting input, most times it's inverting and you feed a little bit of the output back to that input, that non-inverting input, and 
by the way an op amp works the input will try to follow the output so that the so they maintain so they try to stay the same and the amount of of uh, feedback that you have is what determines the gain in our case we had nothing going in almost nothing going in but nothing coming out either and so we had no amplification but we didn't have any voltage in my in my uh, experience when op amps go they usually will um, put a voltage out on the output pin this did not have a voltage on the output pin so anyway a little explanation it looks fair alright so this has a metal cover on the bottom but we're going to put that in later alright so that was the number one that was the number one okay so we on on we're on let's get the uh scope up here yeah we got nothing let's pull this up so you can actually see if there is a trace and we want channel 2 and turn off channel 1 there we go pull him up to the middle alright here we go let's see if that worked Uh, new. You didn't work. So that's not good. So what does that mean? And it's high. No. Turn off channel one. It keeps dying on me. I hate that. I have nothing on channel one. All right. Well, if you're going to be that way, let's just switch you around and see what you got here. Wow, okay, so we've got a hellacious negative voltage. Uh oh. That's not a good thing. Well, when you buy used parts, you know, you get what you pay for, I guess. Well, actually, in this case, didn't get what I paid for. What did I do with my solder wick? Huh. Well, it was here a minute ago. God, I hate it when this happens. Where'd you go? Here you are. I hid you. Okay. Uh... Looks like that one might be bad. Because it has a hellacious negative. Tell you what, let's take the meter here. Uh, just for fun, I am on shorts and opens. So that is negative. Well, Nothing is shorted. Let's see, that's point four there, but we don't know if this one's any good either. Well, we know it's not any good, so it's not shorted anyway. Okay, well. Like I said, it's kind of hard to do this when you can't really test them. I mean, without building up something to test them with. What I want to 
notes. Yeah, and when you buy used parts, I hope at least two of these are good. That wouldn't be fair. Didn't want to come out. It's in there. This is going to hurt. I know it. Okay, that's out. Hmm. This is going to be depressing. This doesn't work. Tell you what, let's put this board back in without that thing in there. And, wow, they just barely fit, that's for sure. Alright, so we'll put that back in without that thing in there. take a couple of measurements here and see what we got. I mean, I'm not going to have anything on the output. I know that for a fact, but where'd my, where'd my light go? Here it is. I'm just going to measure this again. I'm not going to set up that other camera. Let's see. P pin 2. It's got that on it. Pin 3 should be basically nothing. And pin 6 has nothing. What is that? Negative voltage. What in the world? Oh. Well, I might be an idiot. Wouldn't be the first time. I was looking at it incorrectly. When I turned the board over. Anybody else catch that? When I turned the board over, I pulled out the wrong part. I pulled out two instead of one. So, we're going to put another one back in here. Sticky. In my defense, it kind of does look like it when you get right down to it. It goes from the top of the board to the top of the board, but it's the wrong top of the board. Okay. All right, now, now it's back in. <coughs> Fun. slot and that you get it in the little guides. Alright, so this is going to be in two. Ugh. Sometimes I amaze myself. Whoa! And it dropped down to nothing. 
Yeah. Because I have no input at all. Interesting. It's gated, which is exactly what it should do. Um, Iometer. So, what have we got here? Um, Alright, so I'm off. I have no input. <laughs> why, why do I suddenly have no input? Uh, let's see. <sighs> That's two. Off. On. Oh, my generator decided to die on me. Okay. There we go. That's composite right there. And how much have I got? Uh, view windows, and I want RMS. About 1.44 volts RMS. Cost a 600 ohm load with an amplitude of 8.9. So, that does work. All right. Let us pull out the right one this time and stick this one back in here that I thought was bad because I'm goofy. I don't even have an excuse. It's not like it's early in the day. It's noon for crying out loud. I shouldn't... Uh, I should be just a... You know what? I, that, I don't know about that flux. It is some sticky stuff. I'm going to try this. I see. I like that better. Yeah. Except this is really, really makes a whole lot of smoke. I try not to breathe it in if I can help it. It works quite a bit better than that other stuff, too. I guess all fluxes aren't created equal. Alright. That's out. Clean up the holes. Clean up the holes. Wow, come on. Thank you. I'd much rather use a solder sucker if I can. That looks good. Okay. We'll take this guy and throw it on the floor. No. Oh. Oh, got caught in the folds of my shirt. Thank you. Didn't have to go search for it. Get a little bit of, little bit of solder on there. Straighten the pins out again. Isn't this riveting? Okay. Put it back in its little holder. Make sure I got it pointed the right direction. Okay, remember this is the one I put in that I thought was bad. Ow. I just tried to jam that one through my thumb. Okay. in. I'm going to clean it up after I put it back in and test it. 
just in case I have to clean it up again. All right, now let's go on to output number one, right there, and turn her on. Yep, there we go. Now it's not the same level uh, as the other one because we got level inputs. Let's see, composite one. Here is composite one level. We can crank it up to there. Tell you what, let's uh, get another another cord over here. Oh, I got this big old giant long one, but it'll do. All this has to be set up by the engineer anyway, because it depends on what his inputs are for his transmitter or other processing or whatever he uses. All right, uh, so let's take channel two. Channel one's at one volt. Channel two is at one volt. We'll move one up to the top. Okay, and just for fun, we'll match them up to each other. nice 20 turn pot here. So let's bring number two up to there. They're identical. Cool. Alright, so the only thing we got to do now is test and see if we've got audio. And the way we do that is we turn on the little amplifier, get one of these guys. And we do. There's audio coming out of the composite. The, uh, the little, yeah, background, yeah, the uh, little amplifier is used acting as a detector. So there we go. That's done. That's fixed. We know the regular audio works. Now all I got to do is I'm going to go through this. Just make sure everything else works, but. It does, I can tell you right now. Uh, anyhow, <coughs> excuse me. There we go. That works. So we got about a 1 volt output RMS with 3.8 volts uh, amplitude. But what's my peak to peak? Uh, about 3.8, 3.9 volts. That's fine. Uh, let's see. What's your channel 1? I don't know if this little scope will die. It died again. Wow. You gonna come back? Wow. Just, that's just weird. Okay. Uh, there. So we're at about one millisecond. It sort of wants to do it okay. All right, but hey, we're good. We're working. So I'm going to do the rest of it, look at it. Anyway, but there we go. Those parts that you just that we just replaced are the last parts to see the outside world. And if you've got a 150-foot hunk of cable or twisted pair or something running from the output of this over to your STL or whatever you're using uh, or however you're getting it uh, you know to your input either your local or whatever that 150 feet of wire is going to look like an antenna to any high voltage like uh, like a uh, discharge or lightning or whatever so it doesn't surprise me those little guys are out but at least I got two extra in case I need them okay so there we go it's uh all done. Hey, if you enjoyed the uh, video, give it a thumbs up, and don't forget to uh, subscribe and hit that hit that little uh, bell so that you know when I do more of these things. And uh, thanks for watching.